Hello, my friend, and welcome to the 394th episode of The Sales Podcast. I'm Wes Shea for The Sales Whisperer, your host. If you missed 393, that was Stefan Spencer, an SEO guru. And I don't use that term lightly. The guy's been around for a long time, written several books, uh, and he knows what he's talking about on SEO, and he's given away a free bonus uh, to the listeners. So go check out uh, at thesaleswhisperer.com. Look up Stefan, S-T-E-P-H-A-N, Stefan Spencer. Go to his episode, scroll down to the bottom, uh, and hit that link for the, uh, the bonuses he's giving. Uh, coming up next is Brian Kurtz, longtime direct mail guy, uh, copywriter, uh, author of several books, including his newest, Over Deliver. The guy is like one of the smartest people you haven't heard of. He's been kind of a behind-the-scenes guy for decades, working in direct mail, if you know anything about that. Those guys have to make things work. They, they can't trial things on Facebook and, and whatnot. They spend money to send an offer to make money. Uh, so anytime I can reach a, a direct mail guy and get their input, uh, I love having them on the show. Brian is literally one of the top. Been at it a long time. So um, be sure to tune in to that. Uh, I've made some changes. I just made a command decision. I've been speaking with a few folks. I actually spoke with a guy this morning about uh, different membership sites and stuff. He's actually came to me for help with his own and um, trying to pick which platform, you know, Infusionsoft, Entreport, HubSpot. He's got membership site uh, questions, how to communicate with people, you know, direct mail, phone calls, email, SMS. Uh, and this, in the course of that, I mean, really smart guy. It's funny. He's coming to me as a client uh, and he's giving me advice. So love it. Put yourself out there and good things will come back, you know, because I offer a free call uh, to dive in and just see how I can help, you know, if it's even possible. And we looked at the 30 day sales growth program and he was talking about his own pricing and, and things he's considering. And, um, We'll see how it lasts, but I'm changing the 30-day sales growth program back to a month-to-month, and it's just $49.99 a month, month-to-month, and um, I'm going to bring back the live weekly calls. I've got a higher-level group, private coaching. It's a lot more money, several thousand dollars a month, and, and I can only help a few people with that, I understand, uh, and it's that way on purpose. You know, you've got to have a another offer i had andrea waltz on years ago and we talked about going for no you've got to have higher offers somebody will take you take you up on on the offer you know, I had perry marshall on he wrote the book on 80 20 80 percent of the people will take your main offer 20 percent will take an offer that's literally 10x more so keep pushing that right and find out where that upper limit is but i know when i got started on this journey it was when i was able to enroll in a 12-week telecourse it was six hundred dollars back in i paid for it in late 2005 it didn't start till i think it was april i want to say my birthday in april was when it started i know i took a one of their calls in april when i was in vegas so it was early on but uh so i signed up months and months ahead of time and it was just 12 weeks it was a PDF workbook. It was a call, no video. I mean, we didn't have Facebook. We didn't have private groups. Didn't have all that. Uh, but that course changed my life. Uh, it gave me structure. It gave me clarity. And the guy that, that led it uh, has been a friend ever since, a mentor to me. I, I hired him for private coaching. But he gave me a free call when he didn't have to to strategize on an appointment. I remember I was sitting out in Torrance, big um, healthcare uh, series of clinics they had around SoCal, one of my biggest clients. And I realized after speaking with him, I, I got out there early, you know, I was driving out from, from Murrieta, Temecula area. So it could be hours and hours and hours to get out there. Uh, so I left early, couldn't be late. So I'm in the parking lot. Steve takes my call and Everything he told me, I realized I'd done everything wrong. I had no clear, mutually agreed upon agenda. I didn't know what I was getting myself into, so that sucked. The great thing was I knew that that was the last time I would ever have a meeting like that again, and that's held true. 
So that little nudge was such a big difference. So I'm, uh, I'm bringing back the monthly. No contract, cancel any time, uh, $49.99 a month, and I'm bringing back the weekly calls. So it's hard to complain about that now, isn't it? Uh, and there's still the one-year guarantee. If you enroll and tune in for a year and engage and apply yourself and ask questions, and if you don't see a significant improvement in your business, I'll give you your money back. So I don't know how, how else to make this better. So I just changed the price uh, just before I hit record on this. So go do it. 30daysalesgrowth.com. Get signed up. Get enrolled. Get engaged. And let me help you sell mo better. All right? 30daysalesgrowth.com. Now let's bring on Tracy. Tracy Reuter all the way from Colorado with two dogs in the background that I bet we will hear at least one on this episode. Welcome to the sales podcast. How the heck are you? I'm awesome. I'm awesome. Glad to be here. I hope we don't hear them, but the one uh, normally never leaves and she hasn't come down. So as soon as she comes down, she won't make herself known. So Hey, half of mine. It's like the reason I turn my office this way is so you don't see the door. Like when my five-year-old, she walks in like no clothes on or just her diaper like daddy i'm awake where's mommy i'm like mute uh go for texting shannon baby's awake close the door oh my gosh but oh well you know you roll with it we're we gonna do we're gonna roll with it today all right so you are a little bit of a unicorn in my opinion you have a sales background. You're, you're in social media, advertising and marketing, but you have a sales background. So you're not just some hoity-toity, uh, light some incense, uh, change the palette color a little bit, and, and just hope sales come. Is that, is that a good oh my a gosh. Correct assessment? That is a correct assessment. It's so funny that you say that. Yeah, correct assessment. All right. It's good. funny. It's, yeah. A lot of I people. am not the... Um, shoulder to cry on type, right? So uh, your incense and, you know, Venus is out of phase with Saturn. Like, okay, maybe there's something there and I just don't see it, but I don't see it. So I don't bring that on my show. Um, no, don't worry. You won't get that for me. So we're good. All right. So you got a, you got a long background in sales in corporate America, but you've been doing your own thing now for how long? Well, I've had my agency now for um, going on five years, but I've been doing digital marketing since, uh, oh, so let me age myself. I started digital marketing pre-Facebook. So, so early. Did that even exist? (laughs) The rumor has it, it actually did. Yeah, no. So so like early 2000s, 2003, four, five, somewhere around there I started um, as I was kind of transitioning out of corporate sales and I was transitioning into digital marketing. Crazy. Oh, so you were placing uh, like pizza ads uh, at the top <laughs> of the gaming sites? Was that was that it? No, not quite, but close. <laughs> close. All right, yeah. I kind of remember those. Yeah, long time ago. Before we, I mean, gosh, there are people listening that probably are like, "Wait, there was a time before Facebook." It really was. So yeah, yeah. So um, you were contributing author for the Ultimate Guide to Facebook Advertising. Uh, get your own. Uh, show the social media marketing happy hour very cool uh, but you're currently here's what's interesting currently managing four million dollars nearly four million dollars in ad spend so are you doing this for for small clients like super big clients a little bit kind of run the gamut like who's who's your typical client yeah so they run the gamut they're um, usually probably on the smaller side compared to you know, what I was accustomed to in corporate America, I, I was running a sales division for a little tiny fortune 10 company called uh. AT&T. <laughs> so, you know, my, my clients were Motorola, United Airlines. And so with the agency, um, I think on the big end, our biggest client is doing 220 million in revenue. And then we've got a bunch of them that are falling on, you know, between one and 10 million. So they're okay. smaller, smaller businesses. Whoop. <laughs> Making noise. Keep going as Keep you going. were. Just keep drop going. something. Don't yeah. mind me. No, keep going. So yeah, so I mean, they're, they <laughs> they kind of run the gamut. We tend to like to work with um, you know businesses that are doing a million or more because they're more nimble. I find the bigger the bigger the business, the less nimble, the more bureaucracy, the harder it is for them to make strategy pivots. So we try to keep them a little bit smaller. Right. Cool. Uh, could you get a little closer to the mic? It's a little bit low on the volume side. Said nobody ever. Are you kidding me? <laughs> well, you're. Your husband, he, he actually sent me a uh, hundred dollars uh, <laughs> and to to say that. So, to try to uh, be nice, he I, <laughs> doesn't surprise me. <laughs> um, 
All right. So companies that size. So how do you determine which platform to start leveraging for a new client? Yeah, that's a, that's a really great question. So for the most part, there has never been a client that we have that we couldn't leverage Facebook specifically. The world is on that platform, um, even B2B clients. And a lot of people have this perception that B2B, they're not there, they're not interested, but that's, that's the furthest thing from the truth. So typically people are coming to us and they already know that that's our main focus is the Instagram and Facebook ad platforms. Um, LinkedIn, the LinkedIn advertising platform is not quite at a point yet where we feel comfortable advising our clients to put their dollars behind it. It's a, a lot more expensive per lead. Um, and if you, depending upon what your style of sales is, which you're looking for in terms of, of clients, um, ads are not always the right thing to do in that case. So um, it's funny because as an agency, I actually don't run ads for my agency because we're not looking for masses. We're looking for small numbers of people. So so I use old fashioned outreach over on LinkedIn, whereas a lot of our clients that are trying to go for masses, they're trying to sell physical products. They're trying to maybe get, um, they're leveraging information products and they're doing webinars and they're doing leverage coaching. Those are phenomenal to use platforms like Facebook and Instagram. Does that make sense? Yeah. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, how do you keep your dog so calm and on the chair back there? <laughs> Well, he went for a very long walk this morning and he's yeah. pretty darn lazy. So, um, oh, yeah, right. you know, and I might've drugged him up too. a couple of, <laughs> <laughs> this is Colorado, you know, come on. Now. <laughs> hey, you your dog and I have a lot in common, but I, I digress. <laughs> it's for jujitsu. It's for my aches and pains. That's all right. right. Really? Uh, That's right. Um, CBD is it's, you know, you can, it can be sold across state lines now. So, my, so. my, my Reiki master wiccan uh next door gave me a prescription so it's valid i mean <laughs> uh, oh oh man so uh, well, i love what you uh, you don't have to yourself what you do for others because you're going after different targets different audience you're open. i mean i love it still believe uh i think more than ever old school tactics that don't quote unquote scale are more effective, right? Yeah. I'll, I'll send a video to people when they opt in and handwritten letters and I'm mailing my book and you know, and they're like, Whoa, I got something physical in the mail. This is, I got a one-off video cause they know it's a one-off right. because I say their name. Right. Right. <laughs> I got my handwritten notes right here from the yeah. desk of, you know, so yeah, I mean, there is, a, I mean, especially depending upon what it is that you're doing, if it's a very, very ticket sale, then that's going to be a whole approach. And we, we actually run campaigns right all the there. time. Oh, look Amen. at you. Oh, <laughs> nice. Right. Good old, good old Bob Berg. Right. Do you read that book? I've had him on twice. Yeah, I know Bob. Have, yeah, uh, dude. Uh, love his stuff. But in, in fact, I, Bob, there, one of my um, philosophies, one of the things that we, we do with all of our advertising clients comes from Bob. Bob. Bob is the one who coined the phrase, people do business with people they know, like, and trust. And I've added a fourth thing to it that in Bob's book, he alludes to it, but he doesn't actually come out and say it right out. And so my philosophy when it comes to advertising is that all things being equal, people do business with people they know like trust and remember. And that's where a lot of the advertising campaigns that we do come into play is we are, we're taking the, um, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a salesperson, right? So that was my, those are my roots. I have a degree in marketing, but I went straight into sales before I even graduated college. So I go back to that sales, those sales roots and understanding the direct response style advertising, but then also branding and branding to me is not the incense and let's shift a color. It's staying in front of people with valuable information so that when they're ready to pull the trigger, when they're ready to buy, they remember you. Because if, I mean, let's face it, Wes, if you know, you're the best plumber in the world and you know, we've been friends for 20 years when my toilet busts and I'm flooding down here, I'm going to call the person at the time that I remember. Um, and hopefully I know, like, and trust them. But if I forgot about you, because you never, you know, you never got in front of me, you never sent me a mail or you never sent me some physical, I'm going to forget about it. And so that's, uh, that's something I pull from my days in sales into our advertising campaigns because it, it works magically. Yeah. Well, and it's maddening too, when somebody that they buy from someone else and it wasn't because they forgot about you, they just didn't think you did it. 
right? Like I've, right. I've sold Infusionsoft since 2008, right? So 11 years. And I would still have people, still to this day, you know, they're like, well, I bought Infusionsoft and then, uh, so I'm just coming to you to help to optimize. I'm like, why didn't you buy it from me? Oh, I didn't know you sold it. I thought you just serviced it, right? Or vice versa, you know, that they'll, they'll buy a $300 piece of software from me and then go spend 10 grand with somebody else. So, oh, I thought you just sold it. I didn't know you serviced it. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> Right. And that's, and that's where we have to do a, a better job. All of us. Yeah, right? It's our fault. Sure right? people know. Yeah. We're, I got no one to blame. Uh, you know, but you still, you, you can't take it for granted, right? Doesn't matter that I wrote a book on Infusionsoft and speak at their conferences and, you know, have probably 200 videos about how to buy it, how to evaluate it, how to optimize it. But they, they still, people hear what they want to hear. Yeah. You know, and we want to hear different things at different times, just whenever we're ready. And so you got to be, you got to be consistent with that messaging, huh? It's really important. And, you know, one of the things that, about, you know, again, back in the day when, when I was with AT&T that I used to, you know, we used to talk to our salespeople about is the number of touches that you'd need to have before somebody could be turned from a prospect to a customer or a client. And it's even worse today. The average person, the average adult gets hit with 400 marketing messages every single day. And from a, you know, from a digital sales standpoint, the average, uh, the average offer, 2% of the people that see it the first time are going to convert. So 2% on, on average, right? And so like, what do you do? Like, what do you do with the other 98 people out of a hundred that don't do anything? And then, you know, how do you, how do you compete against those 400 touches, all of those things. And so those are things that, you know, I take that, I take that sales background into our advertising strategies and our campaigns so that we can be very strategic about helping our clients nurture those people until they're ready and provide valuable information that can help them, you know, shorten the sales cycle. Because, you know, if it's a, I mean, goodness, I mean, we have got some clients that sell in the, one of our biggest clients is in the crafting space. They're, you know, a lot of their stuff is impulse buys. You know, it's like, oh, I'm going to build, I'm going to do this 4th of July craft. And so, you know, it's like 30 bucks. It's not a big deal. But when we're talking about a $25,000 coaching package, or we're talking about a big piece of software, it's a longer sales cycle and you need to strategically stay in front of people so that so that you can be the one they remember when it's time to buy or get them to buy sooner. Yeah. Are these ads, are they, are they becoming less effective? I mean, I, I try to detach as I'm surfing the web and it seems like, like literally every other post is an ad. And I mean, I just find myself scrolling faster and faster and like, good grief. Where's, where are my friends? <laughs> no, yeah. ad, ad, sponsored, sponsored. You're know, like, good grief. So are, are we reaching critical mass? Is it, is it time to get back into sky riding and blimps and carrier <laughs> pigeons, faxes? It's yeah, faxes. faxes. We're starting to get back to faxes and bus stop benches and billboards. That's what we need to do. Um, actually, you know, it's really good that you brought that up because I, I think that is definitely, it's definitely a challenge, right? And there's a sentiment, I was at an event recently and there was a huge sentiment that, you know, ads are a thing of the past. And and I don't think that that's true, but I definitely think that it is getting, um, it's, you know, Facebook's out of inventory. Like they literally, they are, um, they have sold out. I mean, that's why ad costs are, are going up, but also, I mean, Zuckerberg is in business <laughs> and the only reason why he makes as much money as he makes is the advertiser. So they're always looking for ways to keep the platform, you know, keep Instagram, keep Facebook, keep it so the user experience is good, but that there's still an opportunity for businesses. So I think, I think the biggest thing that needs to happen is advertisers need to shift how they're doing things um, so that it's less because let's face it, you are there to see your friends. Like you want to see a picture of my dog, you know, um, like stretched out and zoned out because he had his hemp pills this morning. You know, you want to see that nah. more than you want to see an ad, right? I mean, but if the ad is done in a way where it's not disruptive, that it's actually adding value to people and the targeting is done right, it's less annoying. Than, than if you're just like, hey, I know you don't know me, but you should buy from me right now because I'm awesome and you need me. Like that's right. crap. Nobody wants that. Should I, should I wave at you like this and then, and then pan out to my Lamborghini? Does that, does that still work? <laughs> oh, I know who you're talking about. Yeah, no, less of, I There's mean. too many of those that I'm talking well, about. Well, yeah, because, <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. I mean, unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately to a degree, it still works a little bit because if it didn't work, they wouldn't still be doing it. Right. Um, but it is, it is becoming less and less effective. And that's where I think what you're going to see over uh, the next 
year to two years to three years, in my opinion, is the people who really have um, like good businesses, people that really understand their customer. They really understand the pain point. They really understand the value that they bring. Those are the people you're going to see the wheat from the chaff. It's going to separate for sure Um, because that garbage it's number one, the platforms are making it harder. Facebook's making it harder and harder for clickbait and all that junk. Um, So if you don't have a legitimate offer and you have junk, you're not going to last. So we are, at a, we are at a really interesting time in many days. I'm like, why, why on earth is this what I chose to do? But right. um, it's really effective. If it's done right, it's, it's really effective still. It just, again, it has to, be, has to be done with a strategy. And Wes, most people that are you know, thinking, oh, Facebook ads or Instagram ads, it's gonna be, the, it's gonna be my ticket. It's gonna be my, you know, my lottery ticket. They have no freaking clue what they're doing. And they just slap up ads with no thought, with no strategy, with no sequence. And that's really what makes it a bad user experience for everybody. Yeah. So since Instagram owns Facebook now, can I run the exact same ad or do I have to change this up for the two different mediums? Um, So you can run the same exact ad. Don't recommend it though, because they're two different platforms. You run it all from the same place and you can run the same exact ad, but natively it doesn't feel right. And it's kind of like one of those things that people, people will sense that even more, you know, so Instagram, it's, it's an interesting place. More people are on Instagram to follow brands than any other social platform that's out there. So nobody's, I mean, that never happened. It's never been the case on Twitter. It's never been the case on LinkedIn. It's never been the case on Facebook. People the people, I think the number is something about 60% um, of people's followers are brands or influencers. So people are on Instagram looking for that sort of thing. So it's a totally different feel, even though you can essentially run a, like almost identical ads. You do want to make sure though, that your ads are native for the platform, meaning the copy kind of feels right for Instagram. The images feel right. The video feels right. Again, there are different requirements. But if you just slap up the same exact ad on both and you don't change any of those things, like people on Instagram are going to sniff that out and they're going to know that you don't belong there. And so right. we always try to customize them for our clients because for that exact reason. So can you give me an example? Um, I've been choosing a, uh, an optometrist lately as my Example, because a friend of mine is a local optometrist. Let's say he's running an ad on Facebook and he, he wants to run an ad on Instagram. How, how would those be different? Like what would the messaging be for one versus the other? So the messaging could be similar. Um, it, it, so I think the, the big difference would obviously be there are character limitations. Um, things like, for example, on Instagram, emojis and uh, hashtags are are more relevant over there. They make more sense because right. that's that's you know innate to the platform. So it, incorporating that over into into Facebook, I'm sorry, over into Instagram would make more sense. Now here's here's a caveat to that. If you if your brand is active on that platform and you never use emojis and hashtags, don't use it in your ads. <laughs> stay true. Stay true to who you are. You know. Right. So that would be one thing that you, I would consider doing different. Um, it could also be. Uh, the image, you know, you, Instagram, because it is such a visual platform, you would want to make sure that the image that you're choosing for that ad really is more, um, it's more important on Instagram than it actually is on Facebook. Not that it doesn't matter on Facebook because it does, but it's more important. So I would make sure that the image that you chose um, really d- does visual storytelling. Um, and if you if you go to build out your campaign, so for your optometrist friend, I would be thinking uh, Instagram first, I'd be thinking, let's find it. Let's find an asset. Let's find an image that is telling a story visually. And then let's use that on both platforms instead of building for Facebook first and then thinking of Instagram as an afterthought. And I think that's a big shift that's happening in the marketplace is forever. We've been Facebook first and Instagram as an afterthought. And there is a big shift where I think it's actually better. It makes better sense for businesses to think Instagram first, think what's going to work on Instagram and then share that over to Facebook. So if he's running an ad, um, well, so first of all, should, do you need a big presence first? Should he try to get 10,000 followers, the magic number, or if his account's new, just go ahead and start running ads. Yeah. So you don't need to have the 10,000. There is not a magic number. Um, more people discover new brands on Instagram through ads than any other way. So it's not necessarily something that you have to wait till you get the magic 10,000. And as a matter of fact, 
um, that's just really for organic. That's more for the organic side of things, not the paid side. And a lot of times people are rushing to get those 10,000 and they're not real followers. They're, you know, they're using different tactics to get there and you, that ends up hurting you in the long run. So if you have no presence, but you really want to try out the platform, you don't even really need to worry about it. You can actually even run Instagram ads without an Instagram account through the, the Facebook ads manager, which is, which is pretty cool. Ah. So, well, that kind of answers the next question. Cause I say, where, where would he send someone? Should he, should he have like a big elaborate post on his own Instagram profile, run an ad to, for people to read that and hopefully they follow and maybe there's a link to his website or, you know, does he link back to his Facebook page? And so, Hey, follow me on Instagram, follow me, like me on Facebook. And then over time, maybe through retargeting, you know, I just, like, yeah. he's not going to do all that. Yeah, no, but. no. And, and the thing that you got to remember about any type of advertising is you really want to be thinking or with, really, gosh, sales, anything that you're doing, begin, begin with the end in mind. What's the ultimate objective? Are you trying to get new customers? Are you trying to get new clients, new patients? So um, it's all about the offer, okay? So we, we run campaigns for different things for our clients. And typically there's always, the ultimate goal is usually always selling something, right? Whether it's um, scheduling an appointment to sell a high ticket offer, or we're selling physical products, whatever the case might be. So in this case, I would be thinking what, um, I'm the optometrist, what's my offer? Is it a free eye exam, right? Like think about um, some of the big, where do I go? I go to America's Best, right? I just got an email the other day saying it's time. You know, you hit your 40s and your eyes, you know, it's a, it's a Sucks getting old, but anyway. Stop bringing up age. All right, I will delete this episode. episode I'm older than gone. you. Zip it. Zip it. So, so if my offer is a free eye exam um, with a pair of glasses, great. So I, I want to make sure that where I am sending that traffic is to an offer page, a landing page. That's the that's probably the most simple. And then making sure that you're utilizing the Facebook pixel so you can retarget those people with something more specific down the road. But for for um, regardless whether it's Instagram or Facebook, you want to make sure that you you have a good strong offer. A lot of times uh, in the past, when we would take on a new client, I would look at their ad history before we take them on. And now I don't actually look at their ad history until I've looked at their offer, because if they have a good solid offer uh, that converts, then we can, we can do all sorts of great things for them. So it really does boil down to, is your offer something that people want and then send people to that? That's really what you want to do. What is he to do, right? I mean, he's, he's not internet savvy right um you know and most people aren't most people are i mean they literally can barely work their iphones right right and but now i'm a business owner i've got to think of calls to action i've got to think of what image is appealing i've got to think of pixel size and image you know specifications and landing pages relevant CTAs rotating these images through cycling. Oh my God. And retargeting, forget about it. <laughs> you know, do, can they learn this on their own? Can a college intern pick this up for them? Is it going to cost? Do I have to hire some agency, sign a one year contract and hope they don't rob me blind? You know, how yeah. Do so that's a, that is a, not a simple question to answer and it's going to depend on the type of business, right? So for your friend, that's the optometrist, that's a, that's a totally different situation than somebody who is trying to scale um, a large e-commerce company or somebody right. that, you know, sure. so, you know, typically, unfortunately, and from my experience for small businesses, like for brick and mortar service-based local businesses, that is probably going to be the hardest place because typically that business owner is trying, they're wearing 10,000 hats and they don't have the resources. Usually their entire marketing budget is less than what someone like me's fees would be, right. um, which is, which is tough. Now they can learn it. There are things out there. You can, you know, there's some great, um, programs out there to learn Facebook ads. The challenge is, is Facebook changes, Instagram changes almost daily. And so sometimes you invest in a course and it's out of date, which is super frustrating. Um, so one, one reasonable thing would be is to, you know, whether it's getting a college intern, going to a, a job site, like Upwork, trying to find some people in the space, um, usually for a local, small local business, which we don't, we don't even work with. Usually you're going to get somebody who's newer and they're cutting their teeth and, and you're going to, you're going to trade off, um, 
you're going to get, you're going to pay less uh, for somebody who is going to be experimenting on you. Whereas if you hired someone like us, we're not going to experiment on you. We've already run millions of dollars of ads. We don't, we don't need to do that. Right. But you're also going to pay a whole lot more. So it really depends on the stage of your business and what you're trying to accomplish. But um, I mean, it's definitely one of those things that, you know, in the beginning, if you just keep it simple, you know, if you just really keep it simple, a good message, a good image, um, and in some cases with a local business, you can even send them to a phone number. You can send them to a you know, direction page. Um, there's things that you can do, but if you're going to start scaling, if you're going to start spending, you know, several hundred to several thousand dollars a day, that's when you better be, you know, darn sure that you have an expert or someone on your team is an expert because you don't want to, you don't, you know, you don't want to invest that kind of money and not know for sure that you're going to get a return on what you're spending. Right. So I, I had Dennis Yu on a while back and I've known him for several years and, you know, he has the uh, dollar a day, you know, Facebook advertising. I mean, and yep. can you still get started for a dollar or two a day, you know, and dip your toe in the water? Um, I think Dennis is a brilliant guy. I think very highly of him. He's, he's quite, quite smart, done a lot of amazing things in the industry. I think that's getting harder and harder. Again, yeah. it's going to go back to the type of your business because, you know, the way the algorithm works, like a dollar, a dollar a day, um, in, unless you know for sure you can acquire leads for 25 cents or 50 cents, a dollar a day isn't, you're, you're never going to get enough statistically significant uh, data to be able to actually get the results you're looking for. So, right. Uh, it, it, that, that is not as cut and dry. I mean, a lot of people do a $5 a day budget, but again, it goes back to, um, is that, is that enough? I guess my advice is always when you first get started, if you're listening and you're just thinking about doing this, think about the, you know, dipping your toe into this as data collection and data collection is priceless. It really is. You need to know, you need to know what doesn't work as much as you need to know what does work so that you can, you can tweak your strategies. So sometimes people go into it and they feel like they're going to Vegas and they're putting all their money on black and they're terrified of it, you know, and I get that. I get that. But at the same time, you know, you think of it as marketing research, you're, you're finding out what messaging works, what images work, and you have to have, uh, I like to say enough intestinal fortitude to stick it out. <laughs> um, and if you don't, then you should not get into the platforms. You shouldn't do it. You, you should wait until you're at a point in your business where you can, um, you know, you can invest a little bit of money and you won't feel like you're going to throw up every 20 minutes. It's because you're checking, you're checking yeah. your account, you know, so. Yeah. And, and I mean, it's been a couple of years and things have tightened up on Facebook, but I mean, the concept I think is still valid. I mean, maybe it's $5 a day, maybe it's even $10 a day. Okay. So that's $300 in the course of a month. Right. If you can't afford 300 bucks, then you probably shouldn't be in business. You right. know, you, you got to spend money on something to grow. Uh, and, and I've always told people like my son, he's, he's been investing in uh, cryptocurrencies a little bit, you know, and obviously not in the last year. Cause you know, it was all, all crazy. He's like, should I do it? Should I do it? And he's got money, right? 500 or a thousand bucks. He can afford it. He's living at home, you know, going to college, and, which reminds me, we got to talk about that. But anyway, <laughs> um, you know, I'm like, you're not going to pay attention until you put some money in it. Exactly. You know, exactly. as soon as you put $500 in your Bitcoin, you're all of a sudden going to be reading about Bitcoin. Yep. You know, and, yep. and so same thing here, you know, if you commit to $5 a day, all right, there's 150 bucks, you know, okay. I mean, buying any course is that, I mean, if you, if you just, if you go to a free quote unquote free conference in, in your city and you're gone for the day, there's 150 bucks in opportunity costs at least. Yeah, easily, easily. You know, so, well, and it's really important. I think, I think that the thing is, I mentioned it already, but it's really understanding what's your offer. So before you even put the 150 bucks a day into it, before you even think about what you're going to do, wh where are you sending people? What do you want them to do? And then do you have, you know, like you, you know, you're an Infusionsoft expert. Do you have the emails? Do you have, you know, do you have the landing page? Do you have the email follow-up? Do you have those things in place? get your back end in order, get all that stuff in order and then, and then start, you know, sending traffic, start, start small and then building. Um, it, and then that, that's going to make all the difference. It's when people, when I see people like just putting their toe in the water and they have no place to send them or it doesn't really make sense with their ultimate objective or they, or they have no email follow-up. It's like, why are you doing, you know, why are you yeah, doing Yeah, but you this? know what? Even if they spend $10 a day and they let it run for a week, Right. Uh, just a business week. So 50 bucks and they realize, oh my gosh, my sequence was sending the wrong link. Fine. Right. Now, but you it know, it cost you 50 bucks to find that out. 
you know, now you will know forever what it means to embed a web form, what it means to how to adjust the, the CTA, the little button. Do I put submit or do I put enter or do I put hell yeah? Do I make it orange? Do I make it green? Do I make it square? Do I make it round? Right. So you, you learn that for 50 bucks, you yeah. know, and then something else is going to break. You know, you're going to have a three email sequence and, it, you know, you'd had the timing all wrong. Okay, great. Now you learn about timing and Oh my gosh. Or you, you start to discover that, um, you know, you have a super high click through rate, but very, very low landing page views. Now you know that your site is slow. <laughs> you know, now you're like, Oh, yeah. my site's not loading fast enough. Like now well, you, get yeah, and you probably it. won't know. You will go, you will find a Facebook group and you will type a question. Help. I've just spent $50 and I got a hundred clicks, but no opt-ins. What's going on? Some, you're going to get 87 answers, but they're probably going to be kind of good, right? It's going to yeah. send you down a path and you're going yeah. to learn. Exactly. But exactly. I'm telling you, you will get ripped off. Otherwise you will, you will listen to a guru and don't think just because you're small. That's why you get ripped off. I'm working with a guy right now. He was spending $12,500 a month for a year, $150,000. And his website images, this is a very successful guy. His website images are named Getty Image underscore one, two, six, five, nine, four. I mean, like, like SEO 101 kind of stuff, right? He yeah. spent $150,000 and literally got no more business. It's, out it's of that. crazy. Well, and I, you know, I think one of the things, the benefits of being small is if you can learn enough about this sort of stuff to be dangerous, when you do bring in an expert, you'll have an idea of what you're looking for. Yes. You'll have an idea of what you need from them. Um, it always makes me nervous when someone comes to me and they know nothing, they have nobody on their staff, no, like they have no working yeah. knowledge um, because then they don't, they, it's going to be hard for them to really know what the good KPIs are, like what, you know, if, if we're having success or not. And if things do tank for a little while, they're going to automatically assume it's us because they don't really yeah. get how things work. So it's yeah. good. It's good business to learn it a little bit yourself. Amen. So what can they learn on their own from you? Huh? I got a little birdie told me you, uh, you made a special little landing page for our listeners. <laughs> I did. I did. So if you go to divinesocial.com forward slash Wes, over there, there's a couple of things. Number one, and we didn't really get into it all that much today, but there is a, a philosophy that we implement with all of our clients. And I call it the three pillars to successful social ads. And what that's going to do, I've got a mini class and a worksheet, and it's essentially ad strategy. So I, I don't teach the nitty gritty of how to pull the levers, but I do teach strategy. And and part of the reason I do that, Wes, is because tactics change, but strategy doesn't. Yep. So I want you to be able to develop a good advertising strategy. And then between YouTube videos and Facebook groups, you'll find how to implement these things. So if you go to divinesocial.com forward slash Wes, you'll be able to get the free mini course and the worksheet. And then I've got a masterclass that takes that strategy and builds it out even further. And anything you could possibly imagine to stay connected with me, you can learn that over there. Very cool. All right. We will link to that. And I am, we're now just going to sit here and stare at one another <laughs> until that dog moves. <laughs> <laughs> he's not moving. I don't think. Hey, buddy. No, he doesn't. He's not going to. Hey, bud. I did see him kind of look. Oh, hey, oh look. there he goes. Yeah. Oh, and the other one oh, came down. So oh, I didn't both see here. the other one. It was hiding behind you. <laughs> she was still, I didn't hear her come down, but she wasn't there when we started. So, hey, bud. <laughs> He's the funniest looking dog. He had one ear uh, partially amputated. So one ear sticks up and the other one flops down. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Must love dogs. That's right. It's Maybe important. It's one of my new criteria to come on the show. Must love dogs. Yeah, that's my criteria if we're, uh, we're going to be friends. <laughs> I need to know you love dogs. Very nice. Yeah. All right. So divinesocial.com slash Wes. Very cool. We'll, we'll leave some for the, uh, we'll leave a little mystique, right? Make, don't give them all the answers. Make them go, go dive in and learn some of this stuff, you know, but, but definitely get started. You know, ignoring a problem won't make it go away. It's true. You know, if traffic is down or it's just static, you know, stagnant, um, spend a little money, spend a little time, mix things up a little bit. It's all good, right? It's all, hey, it's good for your brain. I was just telling my husband that this morning on a walk. You mix things up. It's good for your brain. It's good for your neurotransmitters when you mix things up. So do it. It's important. Fancy. <laughs> all right. Neurotransmitter Tracy. 
That's what I'm called on a regular basis. Uh, that's what she says. All right. Well, oh, thanks for man. coming on the sales podcast. It's been great. Thanks for having me, Wes. It's been too much fun. All right. Have a great day. You too. Paying for social media marketing, paying for advertising on social media platforms is not social media marketing. It's paid traffic. It's paid marketing. It's advertising. Understand the difference, right? You need the strategy. Costs are going up. Facebook's out of inventory. What are you doing to stand out? And that's always been the challenge in business. Whether it was just getting your foot in the door, whether it was calling, sending faxes, sending direct mail. People are always busy. They're always distracted. They're always under pressure. They're stressed. Yeah, there's more ways to reach people. There's, there's social media. There's texting. But people are still busy, stressed out. So that challenge has never changed. That's why I love she talks about tactics change, but strategies don't. Do you understand how to enter the conversation going on in the mind of your prospects? You've got to get clear on that and then know how to reach them. But before you spend money trying to reach people, do you have your conversions dialed in? I go over the five problems. You don't have a traffic problem. You have five other problems. And I talk about that in my webinar, right? The saleswhisper.com slash webinar. I'll be doing it almost every week live, but you can get the recording right now at that link. You should not be spending money on sales and marketing until you know your conversions are dialed in. And I see this problem all the time. People are spending money, and, and it's the old adage, you know, throw enough crap against the wall, something's bound to stick. And yes, it does. Statistically, you know, you get more warm bodies, more eyeballs looking at your stuff, more will buy. But that's just a brute force effort. You know, in the webinar, I show how you can double your sales with your existing traffic by just getting better at conversions. And... It's easier than you think because most people you connect with just naturally about 25% of the population. And at any given time, there's a small percentage that are ready, willing, and able to buy right now. And another percentage will be ready to buy soon. Uh, but I show statistics that 67 to 80% of the people that are considering buying from you today will buy in the next 12 to 24 months. And, you know, obviously that's a broad brush, broad stroke um, kind of numbers. But when people are, are looking for something, you know, it's rare that they're just wasting time. Yeah, they may not have an immediate need, but if they're looking at furniture or TVs or chiropractic care, they'll pull the trigger on that eventually if you stay in touch. Most people don't stay in touch. And that's what I, you know, the webinar is called Fix Your Follow-Up Failure you got to fix the follow-up. Once you have that dialed in, then apply like crazy what Tracy is teaching here. That's when it's just fun. Now you're just, you're putting out a dollar, you're getting two and three and five and ten dollars back once you know your conversions, okay? If you need help with any of that, hit me up. We can talk about it. I can refer you to some people that, that do this kind of work. If um, you just need to get better strategies in place along with your tactics, Hey, join us, 30daysalesgrowth.com. It's as affordable as I can make it. Come join us, all right? Uh, please leave a review for the show. Hit me up on Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook. Let me know who you'd like me to have on. You know, give me some feedback. Uh, leave five, 55 star reviews. How's that? You'd be the first ever. Uh, and I'm still giving away the PDF of the flashcards. So if you leave a review, send me an email and, um, and I'll shoot those to you. All right? Thanks for listening. Don't go sell something.